Mitochondrial DNA Mitochondria are structures inside the cells of the body that are responsible for energy production. They contain their own DNA, and they replicate independently from the cell. Mitochondria are passed through a mother's egg directly to both her sons and daughters. In turn, her daughter, but not her son, passes mitochondrial DNA to her children. Because mitochondrial DNA is passed through the maternal line from mother to child, it contains information about a small number of a person's ancestors. However, since it passes from generation to generation with very little change, mitochondrial DNA is a rich source of information for deep ancestry, going back thousands of years. Discovering our ancestral heritage through our mitochondrial DNA. Every time a person is born, their DNA is a completely new combination of those that came before. Each genome is like a book, where the chromosomes are the chapters. Each chapter is either from the mother or the father, but not both. If you look closely at the words in those chapters, they would be a jumbled mix of your grandma and grandpa. We have 46 chromosomes, 23 from our mother, 23 from our father, and they are found in the nucleus of almost every one of our cells. Sexual reproduction changes the combination of that code, but it's not the only thing that does. Other causes of mutation include UV radiation, like from the sun, nuclear radiation, certain chemicals, or mistakes that occur when cells copy their DNA and multiply. Here's a key thing about mutation. There's a regularity to the rate of mutation. What this means is that you can look at the difference between genetic codes and read how long it has been since they parted from their origin. What this means is that given a collection of many different genomes, you'd actually be able to arrange them on a tree if they were closely related enough. But it's impossible for a much larger group separated by much greater amounts of time because the code just gets too random too quickly. And this is where we return to those 46 chromosomes I was telling you about earlier. I wasn't being quite fully honest. We actually have 47, but the 47th isn't in the nucleus of the cell. It's in our mitochondria the quote-unquote power plants of the cell. And get this, it's circular, just like bacteria. The reason it's just like bacteria is because pretty much it used to be just bacteria. About 1.45 billion years ago, before multicellular creatures existed, a couple of cells bumped into each other. The little one was engulfed like cells will do. The cell wasn't eaten, however, but rather moved in, essentially making a permanent home of the big cell. That little cell is the mitochondria that we have in every one of our cells. A special thing with mitochondria is that in many ways it's still its own cell with its own chromosome, a chromosome that's much less like our nuclear DNA and more like that of a bacteria in that it's round, has very high proportion of coding DNA compared to just what used to be called junk DNA, has an absence of repeat, so it's not repetitive, um, and it's highly conserved. What highly conserved means is that, is that it takes a lot to actually mutate it. And unlike even bacteria, no sex ever takes place, meaning no recombination of genes and the only reproduction is via cloning. Now, it's not just those attributes that make it important. There's one other thing that you need to know about mitochondria. We only get them from our mothers. When a new zygote, or in our case, the first complete cell of a human being, is formed by the union of sperm and egg, that sperm doesn't take any of its mitochondria with it. It's the egg that brings all the cytoplasm to the table. And it's in the cytoplasm where the mitochondria lie. What's special about this is that the mitochondrial code rarely gets altered. There's no mixing the sexes. Your mitochondria code is identical to your mother's and hers is identical to her mother's. Now, between it being 100% your mother's and the fact that any alterations that do happen take a really long time, this gives us the extraordinary power to go back hundreds of thousands of years to find the origin. Now what's mind-blowing about this is this origin isn't some ab abstract idea. There's actually one person, one grandmother to us all. There's one actual woman in the history of the world that we can trace back as being the great 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 grandmother of every last human on earth. This is what we call our mitochondrial Eve. And what we know is that she walked this earth 150 to 234,000 years ago. Now, not only is this cool because you can actually put a date on when this amazing person lived once, but when you actually take a sample of all of the populations of the world right now and create that haplotype tree, we call it haplotype, it just means the, the tree of groups, essentially. 
When you plot that to geographic locations, you can actually see migration patterns. So from that, we know that she actually walked this Earth not only 150 to 234,000 years ago, but we know it was in Eastern Africa. And then when you plot those lines to our present day, with the different groups splitting off and mutating and changing, we can actually peer back into the past and see migration routes and see how did the populations of the Earth, where they lie now, how did they originate? How did they end up where they did? Where did they come from? It's so cool to me that our collective genome and its distribution is our story. It is like a book. It's a book that we can read and actually read our past from now. And that just is mind-blowing to me.